Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Well, some opening words from the Gospel of Matthew, and I'm reading them from this book, Ten Services of Public Prayer, a book uh, first published in 1879, and we'll return in a minute to uh, the significance of this book. But we're still working our way through the alphabet of non-subscribing Presbyterianism. And today we've reached the letter Q. And Q is, of course, choirs and places where they sing. And choirs is spelt Q-U-I-R-E-S. And we'll have a look at the meaning of that in a minute. But we'll begin with a hymn, which John will play for us. today is taken from the Psalms, a psalm of praise and thanksgiving. We're reading Psalm 92 verses 1 to 5. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to thy name, O Most High, to declare thy steadfast love in the morning and thy faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For thou, O Lord, hast made me glad by thy work. At the works of thy hands I sing for joy. How great are thy works, O Lord! Thy thoughts are very deep. And here ends our reading. Well, I got a text off someone the other day, and they said, what are you going to do for Q? And they gave me some suggestions. Queen's, presumably Queen's University, or, or indeed Monarch's, Quests, Quince, Quail, oh, that's possible there, Quran, Kabbalah, or Quakers. Well, they're all, they're all, they're all possibilities, but uh, Q works best when we think of choirs. Choirs spelt with a Q. Now, that is admittedly an archaic spelling, but it has resounded down through history, and there's a reason uh, for singing it, it out in part of our, uh, our alphabet of non-subscribing Presbyterianism. Uh, in this book, this book of ten 
Services of Public Prayer, which was published, uh, this one was printed in 1892, this copy, a uh, rather battered copy, which I bought in a second-hand bookshop for about 20p a few years ago. Uh, this, this edition was published in 1879, and it was a revised edition of a, an earlier book, which was published in 1862. And the original title was Common Prayer for Christian Worship. And James Martineau was one of the devisers of this book and the later uh, edition with the ten services uh, had even more input from him. But from the start it used this phrase in the sort of rubric of the, the morning or evening prayer. It says, in choirs and places where they sing, here may follow an anthem or hymn. Now when they put that phrase in, they were deliberately copying the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. That was the, the phrase that was used when the choir uh, was expected to sing an anthem in the order of worship. Now choir with a Q is a very old spelling of choir and it referred originally not so much to uh, a group of people who came together to sing but a part of the church where people would sit to sing. So it really accorded more or less with the chancel. And the only church in our denomination in Ireland that has a chancel uh, is All Souls Church in Belfast. And uh, All Souls is, is part of the story uh, of this particular word in choirs and places where they sing. So in our dissenting tradition, uh, originally we wouldn't have sang congregational hymns when we came together in our churches and we've looked at the history of the use of the organ in our churches and we've looked at the evolution of the pew in our churches and when a lot of our churches were built the only singing was congregational singing of the psalms so people would stand in their pews and they would sing unaccompanied uh, the psalms and that was the way it was uh, for, for most uh, Presbyterians, for most dissenters, for a long time. But our church again was one of the pioneers of doing things differently. So the second congregation in Belfast employed Edward Bunting as the organist and when they installed an organ, uh, Edward Bunting also put together a choir to accompany uh, their singing. So originally it would have been a choir uh, of young boys just as in a cathedral or a parish church but in the middle of the 19th century uh, at the second congregation they introduced a robed choir made up of adults from the congregation so this is the start of what we know as choirs and in years gone by we used to have a choirs festival in our churches here when all the churches would come together or their choirs would come together and they would sing uh, different uh, pieces as a special occasion but the first choir uh, like that was at the second congregation and the other thing that the, the second congregation pioneered was the use of prayer books in worship now this happened a lot in England amongst dissenting churches it happened less really in Ireland but it did happen in some places and even quite recently uh, not that long ago I would have occasionally taken a service in Dublin and they had their own service book rather like this one and all the congregation uh, joined in the service and response through the book. Now it was the same in the second congregation and later All Souls. In 1868 in the second congregation in Belfast they introduced the predecessor of this book. As I've mentioned it was called Common Prayer for Christian Worship. And this was a prayer book similar to the Anglican prayer book and devised by James Martineau and others uh, to give this kind of liturgical uh, place to worship in our tradition. And the second congregation enthusiastically uh, used this prayer book and they used it uh, right through to the 1890s when a new minister called Edgar Innes Fripp came and he introduced uh, a new form of prayer book which lasted into the 20th century. 
But because they were following in these publications the sort of pattern of the Anglican prayer book, they even copied the wording. So they said, in choirs, with a cue, and places where they sing. Here may follow an anthem or hymn. So that really was the, the introduction for the choir to sing their, their special piece, as well as the congregation repeating all the different prayers and the congregation singing together uh, to join in hymns. So choirs with a cue is the origin of our own church choirs. And still many churches have choirs and they're an enthusiastic and important part of our worship. It's something again which in the time of lockdown we've had to do without. But let's hope that when we come back into more normal church life we can restore again the place of choirs in our churches. But above all, singing is something we all want to do together. It's something we do as a congregation. And that was indicated by the psalm I read at the start. So it is important for us to, to be glad when we come together and to join in singing our praises as a community, as a faithful community under God. Now James Martineau helped to compile common prayers for Christian worship in 1862. But he was very interested in liturgy and continued to develop uh, new forms of service. And in 1879, he published the book again, but with a number of additional prayers and with two additional services which he had written himself. Now, James Martin, who was a minister and a theologian and a philosopher, he was also a very considerable liturgist. And uh, people then and now uh, have always admired uh, his liturgical productions. Now, it's very much a Victorian style. Uh, his wording is also Victorian. But you can see uh, the depth of his piety and the, the biblical basis of his prayers is often very apparent. So we're going to join in prayer now. And I'm going to read uh, one of the prayers written uh, by James Martineau for the ninth service. Let us pray. O God who art and wast and art to come, before whose face the generations rise and pass away, age after age the living seek thee, and find that of thy faithfulness there is no end. Our fathers in their pilgrimage walked by thy guidance, and rested on thy compassion. Still to their children be thou the cloud by day, the fire by night. Where but in thee have we a covert from the storm, or shadow from the heat of life? In our manifold temptations, thou alone knowest and art ever nigh. In sorrow thy pity revives the fainting soul. In our prosperity and ease, it is thy spirit only that can wean us from our pride and keep us low. O thou sole source of peace and righteousness, take now the veil from every heart and join us in one communion with thy prophets and saints who have trusted in thee and were not ashamed, not of our worthiness, but of thy tender mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us in our service today. This look at the letter Q and choirs and places where they sing. And a look too at some of James Martineau's prayer books and prayers. A big thank you to John for playing the organ for us, and John will conclude our worship uh, with a hymn in a moment. But let's just bow our heads once again for the benediction. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, which the world can neither give nor take away, be with us all and abide in our hearts this day and evermore. 
Amen. Thank you.